Breaking news now, a ruling just moments ago in a case where a federal judge is considering whether Congress can have access to President Trump's financial records from two banks. This may be a second major loss for President Trump when it comes to the question of whether or not he has to turn over sensitive financial information to the Congress investigating him. I want to bring in CNN's Christina Aleshi. Christina, what did the judge say? Well, the judge is still reading uh, and going to potentially give us some more information, but it appears at this point that he is not going to stand in the way of a congressional subpoena for, for to two of uh, President Trump's banks, Deutsche Bank and Capital One. Deutsche Bank, one of his largest lenders, and Capital One, where the president and certain family members have accounts. This is a blow, another blow to the president uh, in his attempt to keep his financial information private. The judge in this se case seems to be buying the congressional argument that it has the power to investigate the president and also that it is not bound by financial privacy laws. This was an argument that the Trump attorneys were making in court. It's the same argument that they made in Washington, D.C. As you pointed out, this is the second major loss for the Trump lawyers. That said, he, they could appeal this decision as they did in the Washington, D.C. court. Of course they will. I'm sure that they will appeal. Uh, Christina Leshy, thank you so much. Uh, joining me right now, Democratic Congresswoman uh, Madeline Dean from the Great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. She serves on the Judiciary Committee. She's called for the impeachment of President Trump. She's also on the Financial Services Committee, which is one of the committees asking for President Trump's financial records from these banks. Uh, Congresswoman, first, uh, your reaction uh, to the news that this judge is not going to stand in the way of the congressional subpoenas of these records, uh, financial records uh, of the Trumps? I'm pleased and I'm not surprised, and I'm learning the reporting through you, so thank you for that. I've been in uh, a judiciary hearing where we're doing the markup on a very important bill, the DACA bill. Uh, but I did talk with Chairwoman Waters this morning uh, and have learned, you know, over the course of my relationship with her, how she has been for the last two years attempting to get information from both Deutsche Bank and Capital One about what appears to be very irregular uh, banking uh, transactions with uh, Trump and the Trump Organization. So I'm pleased and, and I'm not surprised. Uh, it was the right ruling uh, and I won't be surprised uh, that the president and his administration and his personal minions uh, will appeal uh, because they're doing everything in their power to stonewall. And what are you looking for in these financial records? I mean, the president, I'm sure, has referred to it as a, a, a fishing expedition. Is there something that you know is there uh, or are you just looking to see what is? Some of the indications are through the direct testimony of uh, Michael Cohen, who indicated that the president either inflated or deflated uh, uh, assets or holdings or liabilities uh, according to his wish and whim. Uh, we also know that many other banks simply wouldn't deal with the Trump Organization any longer. Apparently Deutsche Bank was willing to take those risks, but I wait to see. Uh, I don't prejudge it. I wait to see what is in the records. Uh, but again, uh, take a look at the number of committees of oversight uh, who are looking for uh, constitutional oversight of this administration and take a look at the extraordinary clash and the extraordinary stonewalling of this administration. Not understanding that we are a co-equal branch of government and we have a constitutional obligation. It's our duty. This is not some fishing expedition that we think is fun. This mm -hmm. is our constitutional obligation to get at the truth and to say that no man, no matter how high he goes, is above the law. Your reaction today to the threat from President Trump to no longer work with Democrats while these oversight investigations are going on. You're on the Judiciary Committee. What, what do you make of it all? Of course, uh, again, I, I was with uh, Speaker Pelosi before she went over uh, to uh, the White House with other leaders uh, on the transportation package. I guess we all held out hope that this would be the one thing that the person who claims to be the greatest deal maker in the world would want to be a part of for the good of the American people, for the good of our infrastructure investment that is so woefully needed. And I'm totally not surprised uh, at the tantrum that the president pulled. Imagine that, uh, that this uh, president held out uh, and said, I will no longer talk to you, no longer negotiate for the good of the mm -hmm. American people over the fact that we have oversight uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, it, it's a tantrum. Uh, it, it is a cover up, sadly. This is a president trying to cover up because notice what he did right afterwards. He went out uh, to the uh, Rose Garden in an impromptu, unplanned way in his tantrum. Apparently, there was a sign there no collusion, no obstruction. Of course, that is a false claim by this president, and he knows it. It's a false claim by Attorney General Barr, and he knows it. And it's a false claim by members of uh, the other party on my committees. Mm -hmm. It's shocking. The Mueller report says very clearly, A, we're not looking for collusion because that's not a legally binding thing. 
and B, there was m many pieces of evidence uh, of uh, obstruction of justice directly by this president. If the Mueller report says no collusion, no obstruction, all the more reason that the president would have everybody come before us and wouldn't block Barr or Mueller or McGahn or anybody else uh, and would want us to see the full report because it's so exonerating. The truth is it's not exonerating. If you've read the report, it's not. Uh, the president and his minions are involved in a cover-up. Congresswoman Madeline Dean uh, from the Great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I know you have to go to vote on a few a few issues. So please come that. please come back. We have lots more questions for you. Thanks so much for your time. Know that we're doing substantive work for the good of the American people. Thank you. All right, thanks, Congresswoman.